Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, uh, good to have you back. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I want to go back uh, to uh, April of 2008, and I think uh, when, uh, your, uh, when you were president of the uh, Federal Reserve Bank in New York, uh, you, you first uh, addressed, uh, started addressing uh, the issue of, of LIBOR. Now, were you aware uh, in the fall of 2007 that some informal emails were uh, coming into the New York Fed, you know, just saying, you know, there's something up with LIBOR? Uh, Congressman, I do not believe that I was aware of those specific concerns before that period, roughly in the spring of 2008. But in response to your request and others, the New York Fed, my colleagues, are going back and looking uh, at the full range of things available. And we'll share that with you. Make sure you're, you have that. And, and, and I was looking at uh, your response uh, back to the Bank of England uh, about uh, this disclosure. Um, and basically, I, th I thought what you made in, in uh, I think it was five or six uh, bullet points there, some structural recommendations of how maybe LIBOR could uh, be more reflective. Uh, but here, here's, here's, my, uh, here's my issue with that. Um, if, if it was, if they were having structural problems, I thought your email was appropriate. But what was being disclosed here was, you know, fraud. That this rate was being manipulated. Uh, Mr. Zivi, who is the, uh, I guess he was the special counsel for the Federal Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission, said this. He said the regulator has an obligation to make a criminal referral if he suspects a crime may have occurred. And how, you know, manipulating, uh, you know, LIBOR didn't didn't rise to that level is a little puzzling to him, and it's a little puzzling to me. Well, I think, I think you should think about, we, I thought about this in two different ways. One is you had a rate set in London overseen by the British Bankers Association, which because of its design, created not just an to underreport, but the opportunity to do that. That was a problem for a lot of different reasons. Opportunity, it created for fraud manipulation, not just under underreporting. So it was very important that there be an effort to fix those problems in the rate. And of course, our first instinct, as you might expect at that point, was to go to the British, and they said, we agree with you, we're on it. Now, we didn't know whether that was going to be sufficient or not. So we also did, I think, the appropriate thing. Again, we did it at an early stage, even though these concerns were in the press. And we went and briefed the relevant authorities with enforcement authority and responsibility for fraud and manipulation so that they would be, have the ability to choose whether to act on those concerns. And we thought the combination of the concerns in the public domain and the efforts we took directly with them provided more than enough basis for actions to not just reform the structure of the rate, but to pursue the behavior that was obviously so consequential. Well, you know, uh, and uh, I talked to Mr. Gensler, and he said really where they got their uh, information to proceed with there was not from, from the New York Fed, but basically from the Wall Street Journal article that prompted them to open up an enforcement action. But, you know, it wasn't just a British problem. I mean, you, you know well, and you, you've been in, involved in the financial markets for a very long time. You're very knowledgeable. Uh, you had to know that to manipulating LIBOR wasn't a, wasn't a small, small uh, impact. I mean, there were people on the buy side and the sell side. Some people benefit, but some people were, were losers because of that. And a lot of financial transactions, uh, as one of my colleagues mentioned, are tied to that and indexed off of that. And uh, the outcome of that transaction is, is, is based on that. So, I mean, that, and domestic U.S. banks that, that are a part of that. Well, I, absolutely. I agree with you. I, the, this rate had implications for not just the United States, but for financial markets around the world. the world. It was 10 currencies. Yeah. And that's why we did what we did. We did not view this as something that was some small isolated problem with the impact limited to London in that context. And you're exactly right. So what, again, what we did was try to push them to fix it, reform it. Fix is a bad word in this context. Uh, and to make sure that the US enforcement agencies and authorities were able to focus on... Uh, I'm going to interrupt you there just a minute because uh, I, they're going to be... 
did you, after the June memo, did you ever follow up and say, hey, what have you guys done since our last conversation or our last memo? We did and my colleagues did. And the British Bankers Association at three separate points, I think, after we acted in this context, announced some changes to that process. But uh, obviously, we don't think they went far enough.